Today, I'd like to go over a little bit of a buyer beware situation. I'm going to be talking today about my Chinese made C melody or C tenor saxophone. I got this instrument a few months back, directly ordered from the manufacturer in China. And immediately out of the box, there were some issues with the instrument. I'd like to highlight some of those instruments for anybody thinking of purchasing one of these instruments. You can get them off of eBay or Alibaba. I got mine off of Alibaba, about half the price of what you would get off of eBay. So let me go over a few things. Number one, the first thing I noticed when I got the instrument is the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece supplied with the C tenor sax comes from China is not a C tenor sax mouthpiece. It is an alto sax mouthpiece. The problem with the alto sax mouthpiece is it caused the entire instrument to play half a step sharp or thereabouts. So in essence, it wasn't a C instrument, it was a C sharp instrument, which is pretty useless. C is a much friendlier key. Uh, so, immediately, first thing I did is I placed an order uh, for a new mouthpiece. This is a Caravan mouthpiece. And she ended up having a rather lengthy email discussion with Dr. Caravan about the instrument, about the mouthpiece, making sure it was the right fit. And I do prefer the old round chamber sound, the true classical sound of the saxophone. So, that's what I went with. So, once I got that, I was then able to discover what the instrument's capabilities really were. So let's talk a little bit about intonation. So one thing is that I made sure I got my uh, sax with two necks. The straight neck you see on here, and then a curved neck. The curved neck has a permanent place in my case. I don't use it. The uh, reason I don't use it is it is not in tune with itself. The, if I get the left hand where it's in tune, C, B, A, then the right hand gets progressively sharper, up to about 30 cents sharp in the right hand. So this just is inherently not in tune. Whereas with the straight neck, everything I can get on the instrument was within... 10, 15 cents of sharper flat. With that level, I can lip it. Much easier, particularly with this Caravan mouthpiece, lipping intonation is really pretty easy. So the curved neck just can't be used, which is fine by me. Actually, I prefer the straight neck. I've got a uh, Neotech neck strap on with the strap in the fully up choke you position, the instrument just comes to my mouth level. But if I have the curved neck in, it actually hits me right in the neck. So I can't actually use one of my good neck straps on. I have to get a much smaller uh, kitty neck strap out to be able to play with the curve. The next thing is a huge mechanical issue with the instrument. It's the octave key. Uh, the octave key is so poorly designed that I had to rebuild it. The octave key here is an amalgam of an old school system and a new school system. Old school, I can show you with this 1929 Bisher Alto. The octave key is placed directly above the thumb rest. It's only about an inch in length. The pivot is on the right side of the thumb rest. So the thumb on this instrument goes up. Very, very simple mechanically. Now, a newer system is like on this curved soprano. It is off to the, the key is now off to the right side, the thumb no longer moves up. The mechanics are now on the left side of the thumb rest. What the C tenor has is the mechanics are, well, it should theoretically be that the mechanics are on the left side of the thumb rest. However, if you go in a straight line directly up from the thumb rest, 
it's directly above it. But the key is placed in such a way that it's also directly above it. Directly above, directly above, we have no pivot. There's, there's no way. In fact, when I first got the instrument, you press the key down, and I'm pressing the key, and it's not moving. Because the pivot's in the wrong spot. If the pivot were moved over some, the key moved over, it would work. They've got the... It's, it's close to an old school system where it's up, but the pivot's on the wrong side. If they move the pivot over and change it out, it would be fine. My workaround is I soldered on a new touch piece. Uh, this is a, old, a key off of an old clarinet that I just soldered in place. It comes off now to the right side of the thumb rest. And all I have to do is wiggle the thumb. The thumb now no longer needs to move up. It's all off to the right side. This works pretty well. It's not aesthetically pleasing, but for me, it works. So that there is the only mechanical issue. Um, the only thing I have to worry about is because the key is a little bit weak, it's not made out of the strongest metal, and it is over two inches long, it does have a tendency to want to bend a little bit, and it can sometimes get in the way of the C-sharp trill. You can hear that that's the, the key actually hitting the C-sharp trill key. Now the other thing is the palm keys. The palm keys once I got right mouthpiece on, figured out which neck to use, the palm keys were a mile sharp. Um, in fact, some of them were so sharp they were registering as the next note. The, so the, the fix here, and this is one that I got from Dr. Caravan while talking to him, really pretty easy fix, is I've shimmed up the tone holes with a piece of cork on the upper side. It's actually a pretty easy process. All I did is took a piece of cork, I took the key off, pressed the cork into the tone hole. That now had an area where I could cut out. I cut out the shape of the tone hole, and then I cut the cork to the desired shape. In this case, I want it to be a, a half moon, a crescent moon. And so by doing that, put it on the upper side, I've essentially lengthened the tube of that note in lowering the pitch. Raising the pitch would be much more difficult, but lowering the pitch is pretty easy. I've only done two of the keys on here. Um, I've done the high D and the high E flat. And I'll show you um, just how out the notes above E flat are. So this is D. So that's sitting right in tune. Wait, just how she's just here. There it is in tune. Now here's E. I can lift that up to an in tune F. Should be a semitone. It's almost a whole tone. Um, and so I've got to shim up the E, the F, and the F sharp. Now, if you are prepared to do all of this work, and none of it is terribly difficult except for getting that piece soldered on to the octave key, the instrument will play pretty well. In fact, I actually really like the tone of the instrument. It's really a very flexible sound. It's a sound that I really like for classical settings. Um, and 
it's it, it's just a it's a new voice. I actually do like the instrument. Uh, that said, it, you know, if I had to give it uh, a rating out of five, it'd be a two out of five. It's it's not going to get much more than that. It is not, you know, on the level of a, a good Yamaha or a good summer instrument, but it is the only C tenor C melody being made currently. So it's either this instrument with modern keyboard or find an old vintage instrument and completely rebuild it. And for the money, it was actually cheaper for me to get the new instrument than it would be to rebuild an old con straight neck. So hopefully this video is informative for those of you who are looking at the C tenors you find on the internet.